Um, my entire week is me working at a comic book shop, so I have a lot of time to think about shit. Because if there's one thing about working at a comic book shop, you don't get a lot of fucking work. <laughs> comic books, as they're on a rise, weirdly enough, in the popular consciousness, which is weird considering that we do not make any fucking money. So no one told this to our customers. Now, the re I've always loved comic books. Like they were one of comics were my first big love, right next to music. And one of my fa probably my favorite comic book character is Robin, Batman sidekick. Which is when you're 15, that's all right. But when you're 22, turning 23 in less than two weeks, you start realizing that that's the equivalent of being a 30-year-old and saying that your favorite band is the Beatles. Oh, I'm sorry, are you a fucking high school student who just got into music? Which is weird because my favorite band is the Beatles, so... I'm on a downward slope already. And while working at the comic book shop, I realized a couple of things, and... One, one of those things is, of course, the fact that you don't make any fucking money selling comic books. And the second one, and this is the important one, is that there are so many fucking X-Men and Spider-Man books out there. If I never see another X-Men comic in my life, I will be a satisfied motherfucker. Because X-Men is like the cocaine of comic book series. Because it's one of those things where, wow, there's a lot of this shit around. I didn't even know these many people like that. And then you think to yourself, wow, Batman's like the weed of comic books. Where everybody knows about it, everyone has partaken in it in some way or another, but nobody gives a shit. Usually they just bum it off of somebody else, they don't buy it for themselves. Okay, like, hey, you got any Batman? Yeah, exactly. You got any comic books there, man? That's no, okay. not X-Men, I just want the cheap I shit. Do, I do that one, actually. <laughs> and... Being a stand-up comedian has... One of the things I thought about while I was in there... This comes from a place of love. Sometimes being a stand-up comedian is really fucking stupid. And not because of any particular people, but because situations that come about when you're doing comedy are just goddamn hilarious. To give you an example... I was at a place in Tampa one time doing an open mic and a friend of mine who was going on later came up to me and he said, hey, um, I hate to ask this, but can I get your spot and you take mine because I got to leave early? And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. After he finishes his, his set, he comes up to me and he gives me $5. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever felt like a whore before. But at that particular moment, I felt like a cheap hooker. Because at first it was just like, yeah, I'm just a friend doing, another fav doing a favor for another friend who's also a comedian. But now it's become like all a gear running throughout my mind where I'm just thinking to myself, oh, so you only wanted me for my three spot, is that it? Oh, do you want my spot too? <laughs> like, it's one. And another incident that happened. Another incident that happened was my first ever gig. To this day, I have only gotten one gig. I dream to perform at a comic con. That is my ultimate goal in life. If I can perform at a comic book convention, I will be set for fucking life. I can die happy. And so I took the incentive to message Tampa Bay Comic Con and ask them, hey, can I do a set? And I did three paragraphs worth of stuff. And in the last paragraph, the last thing I said to them before sending the message was, please send me a message if you are at all interested or if you just want to tell me where to stick it. That way they got what my sense of humor was. I have not heard back from them yet. So I think that was a bad idea. You know what they say, hindsight, 2020. 
But my first ever gig was at a place called the Red Barn. Has anyone ever been to the Red Barn? I used to bust tables there, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> then you will know what I'm going towards right now. It burned out when, I got, when I got the call about doing the gig, the guy asked me, okay, so what kind of jokes do you do? And I went through my usual spiel, just like, oh, I talk about whatever you want me to talk about, depending on what the crowd is like. Because I could do religion, I could do politics, I could do ordinary life shit, I could talk about cars. Like, just on the off chance that you have a car crowd in there. And he said, okay, that's good. Because the, the audience is, um... It's, uh, it, it's mainly um, uh, African-American. And he said it like that. All the hesitation, all the pauses, that was verbatim what this guy said. And out loud I said, yeah, that's fine with me. I'm perfectly all right with this. But in my head, the only thing I could think was, you mean black, right? <laughs> because as a stand-up comedian, you should know that you can't, that you don't have to be politically correct with me. You can say whatever you want and I'll laugh along with it. Like, on the off chance that I was a racist, why would he be giving me the gig if that was the case? Because, what would he think would happen? It's just like, is that why he decided to say African American? Just the terminology would have made me happier? Because it just makes me think, like, on the other end, was he expecting someone to be like, now oh, I ain't gonna be playing for no darkies, but African Americans, that's another situation entirely. Okay. <laughs> and when you have a gig like that, that's already a good start to your profession. That's all I'm gonna say. When you start off with a miscommunication about race, you're off to a good start. You're off to the fucking racetrack. I will let you guys know, being unprepared is also a big thing of mine, so, sorry. Um, the, and the worst thing about being a stand-up comedian is the fact that you have to deal with really stupid comedian quirks. Not from other comedians, but from people who find out that you are a comedian. Because there is nothing I hate more than Chicago, the band, not the city, just to let people know. Then, I'll get into that one later. That's another set for another time. But, if there's one thing that I hate, it's whenever you tell somebody, I do stand-up comedy, and they say, oh, can you do a little bit for me right now? No, I cannot do a little bit for you right now. And I realize, only people working in some kind of entertainment industry are put on the spot to do their job almost immediately after somebody finds out you do their, that job. Like, imagine you meet a guy and he says he's a carpenter. Oh, can you fix the table in my fucking house? Or you meet someone who's a tattoo artist. Oh, I've always wanted to get a little Minnie Mouse right here. Can you do that right now for free so I don't have to worry about it anymore? I'm probably going to do that next time. I'm going to go up to some guy who works at Subway and be like, make me a sandwich. Come on, guy. Come on, guy. Come on, guy. Now that ends the bit on stand-up comedy, which I've been stalling. I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie. I have been stalling for a while because there's one thing that I've been dreading talking about, and that is the fact that now, officially, the president of the United States is Donald Trump. Now, I'm mainly upset at this for one reason and one reason only. First of all, I am not a Trump supporter, but I am a supporter of moving the fuck on. I am a huge supporter of except, let's cut our losses, let's do better the next election. But I've gotten into some shit in fa on Facebook about that, so if you can't beat them, fucking join them. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, is, 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 is it? Is it depressing that this is the exact reaction I was wanting to get tonight? 
But there's one reason I'm upset that Obama is no longer our president. It's the fact that we lost one of the greatest television personalities of all time and also one of the greatest statesmen who has ever existed. I'm not talking about Obama. I am talking about Joe fucking Biden. Yeah! Joe Biden was the highlight of the Obama presidency. Let's all just agree on that because you, we had to worry about making jokes of Obama because Obama was, had, was in the hard position of being the first black president and he tried his best at the worst possible care. time. We're ready for war, that's what we're ready for. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But with Biden, he was just at a level where Obama had to give a shit, Biden stopped giving a shit when he got the vice presidency. And we will not have that anymore. That upsets me. Who are we gonna look to? Mike Pence? Fuck that. Mike Pence is not nearly as entertaining as Joe Biden, and for one reason and one reason only. When I look at Joe Biden, I say, aww. When I look at Mike Pence, I say, ah. And it's just one of those situations where you are constantly wondering, who will fill the void? And I found that person, ladies and gentlemen. I am so glad to say this, I have found that person. He is the current press secretary, and his name is Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer, for the past five years, has had an open, brutal Twitter feud with Dippin' Dots. I will repeat that because I think it needs repeating. Sean Spicer has been in a bitter feud with an ice cream company. And where did this all start? This all started because Dippin' Dot's slogan was, at the time, the ice cream of the future. And Sean Spicer took offense to that. He said, and I quote, Dippin' Dot is not the ice cream of the future. Do not be fooled by the propaganda. He used the word propaganda to talk about ice cream. This is our new Joe Biden. That is adorable. I can't even be mad about that. Like, that is charming to me. Because if you get mad at ice cream, imagine how you're going to handle real shit that happens during the presidency. Thank you guys very much. I've been Artega. I hope you have a great night.